So as I mentioned in in term of chapter ten, and for us, we will deal with probability and counting technique. So we will do or in ten point one through ten point four. It's just the introduction of probability and the introduction of counting technique. Uh, and today, like I mentioned, I we will go over ten point one all the way to ten point four. The definition and there are a few problems that I want to show, but we will not go in detail of the problem. Okay, so in terms of probability, all of you or many of you all know this probability item or the 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 probability or what probability represent. So, but we have some terminology we want to go over so that it's easy for us to communicate to each other. Right. So the probability experiment is basically, in short, is basically what we try to do or what we try to accomplish. For instance, if I flip the coin, if I flip the coin, that is the experiment because I don't know if the coin land on a head or a coin land on a a tail. If I pick out a card, then again, that is my experiment. It's basically what we try to see that the outcome going to be. The outcome can be a head. An outcome can be a tail. If I have a dice, the dice can land on number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, right? If I roll the dice, that will be your experiment, which is the process of you doing something that lead to the the outcome. And in the experiment, we have a sample space. The sample space is basically the total possible outcome that you have. So if I say if I flip the coin, if I flip the coin, you see that again the coin, the sample space will be a head or a tail. If I roll a dice, a dice that have six sided that contain one dot, two dot, three dot, four dot, five dot, six dot, those are your sample space. Okay, so sample space is basically the total possible outcome for whatever the experiment that we want to do. And in the sample space, there are individual outcome, meaning again, the outcome can be a head, one outcome, or a tail is the other outcome, right? So the outcome is basically the result from your experiment, or in term of the subset of your sample space. And if you remember, subset meaning a portion of a of a set, right? And the event. One thing in short is the event is what we are looking for. Okay, the event is when you do the experiment, you want to looking for the event. So, for instance, I want to looking for a tail. What do I do? I flip the coin. That's my experiment. The event is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a tail. The outcome can be a head or a tail, and that is the same as your sample space. Okay. So, in short, in short, this is what we have is. The experiment is what we want to do, right? In this case, the experiment I want to do is I want to draw a card. So, if for those of you who don't know the 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 dex of card, this is your sample space for your dex of card, right? Meaning again, this is all of the possibility that you can get, but you only pick out a card. You only pick out one card, right? So the experiment is we pick out one card. The sample space is this is the total sample space, the total possible card that you have, which is fifty-two. You have the ace, which is one, two, three, all the way to king, right? So jack, j, q, k, right? Uh, jack, queen, king. So the sample space, as you can see, if you were to dissect this, the experiment is we pick out one card. That's what we want to do. The sample space is the possible card that we have in the, here. And the event is we want to draw an ace, right? I want to pick out a card, and the card I want to pick out is an ace, and that's the event. That's what we're looking for. As you can see, what is the outcome? The outcome can be an ace, can be a two, can be a three, can be a four, can be five, a six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king, right? And again, it can be heart, can be diamond, can be space, or can be a club. Right. So basically, the the different the definition is tell you uh, the most important thing that I want you to remember is the event is what we're looking for. The sample space is what the total possible item we can have. And as you will see later, that's what the probability is. The probability is what we're looking for, 
over the sample space. Okay. The if you look at this thing here, we skip to chapter ten point four. The reason is uh, it's a little bit out of order, so I I want to put in the order that I want it to be or to teach you guys. So ten point four is basically tell you that a tree diagram, a table, and the sample space is in short. In short, chapter ten point four is basically tell you that how or what is the different ways can we come up with the sample space? What is how how many different way or what is the different way that we can come up come up with this sample space? And if you remember the sample space, meaning what is the possibility? What is the total possible outcome that we can get? So the tree diagram you will see this basically we try to draw like a tree to show us what we need to do. And for instance, let's say if I want to flip the coin three times. If I want to flip the coin three times, do you agree that if I flip the coin the first time, I will have a head or a tail? If I have a coin, it's either a head or a tail. If I flip the first time, I can get a head or I can get a, a tail. And if I flip the second time, do you agree that if I flip the second time, I can have either a head or a tail and again, a head or a tail? Meaning, what does this mean? This means in the first try, if you look at this thing here, it's not that I have, I, I flipped four times or three times now. I only flipped two times, ladies and gentlemen. It's basically tell me that I can have a head, the first try, and a head, a second try, right? Or I can have a head, the first try, and a tail, a second try, right? So this thing here, meaning, First, I got a head, then I either have a head or a tail. And the bottom here is the first thing I have a tail, then I have a head or a tail in this case. So it's not that I flip more than more than two. I only flip two times. It's just that the tree or we branch it out. I branch it out to a two different outcome, a head or a tail. And within a head, I will have either head or tail. And within a tail, I will either have a head or a, a tail. And if I flip the third time, if I flip the third time, I branch it out. And within this thing here, I will either have a head or a tail, a head or a tail, and vice versa. Meaning, what, do, what, do, what does this tree diagram mean? Well, the tree diagram means this, which is I either have the first time I flip, I have a head. The second time I have a head. The third time I flip, I have a, a head. Or I can have a head, a head, and a tail. Or I can have a head, tail, head, head, tail, tail. Or vice versa, tail, head, head, tail, head, tail, and so on, so forth. Meaning, as you can see, this is what the tree diagram tell you. The tree diagram just show you that we have we start with something and we branch it out. We branch it out. We branch it until we finish with how many, how many ever experiment that we want to do again what is the, is the experiment the experiment here is we flip the coin and again in this case we flip the coin three times meaning each time we flip the coin we have an experiment okay and as we will see later the total sample space that we have is eight this is the total eight sample space that you have in terms of that there's no other outcome beside this eight outcome that you have. This eight individual outcome, or as you will see later, there's no other combination of head and tail other than this eight head and tail, okay? So in short, in short, the tree diagram is basically tell you that we list out, we branch out what is the result from our experiment, okay? The first experiment, the second experiment, the third experiment. The other thing that in 10.4 they tell you is instead of the tree diagram, like this thing here, and again, the tree diagram can be vertical or horizontal. This thing here, I, I do it horizontal. Instead of the tree diagram, they can give you a table. And as you can see, the table here tell you that if you were to roll two dice, if you were to roll two dice, one of them is blue, one of them is red, this is the total possibility that the dice can land on. 
again, reminder, the dice is the one dot, the two dot, the three dot, the four, the five, the fifth, and the sixth dot, right? Those, those dots represent by one, two, three. So this is the total possible outcome that your dice, the two dice that you roll can land on, is can land on one, 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 two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six, or vice versa, two, one, two, three, one, four, one, five, one, five, six. And all of this thing here, the total possibility, as you will see that we have 36 total possible items that can come out, okay? And for now, we haven't done any problem related to the sample space. We just wanna show you that there are different ways that we can illustrate the sample space. One way is the tree diagram. Another way is the table. In this case, we just lay out all of the possible outcome right and the other way is you will see that the frequency distribution table but we will get there later so and that's all there is in 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 10.4 later in german but let's go back to the key item that we have in terms of the probability so how do we find the probability and and this is the only thing that relate to chapter two, if you remember chapter two. If any of you remember chapter two, this is the only thing that relate to chapter two that we have is they say let E be an event. And remember the event is a subset of the sample space, right? Which is the portion of the sample space. We will write that N of E, what is N of E? Reminded the cardinal number, right? The N of E, cardinal number of E, which is in short, how many item is in the, the event. And then we write the N of S, which is the total number of items in your sample space. And this, ladies and gentlemen, to find the probability of the event, the notation we have to find the probability of the event, all you need to do is ask yourself, what is the total of the event that we're looking for over divided by the total sample space? meaning the total possible outcome. And one thing, one good thing, one thing that you have to recognize that if they ask you for probability, if they ask you for probability, the answer will always be between zero and one. The probability will never be bigger than one and will never be smaller than zero. So if, you, if they ask you to find a probability and you give me 3.71, you did something wrong. Your answer should not be bigger than one, okay? So in short, you will hear me say a lot to my student is to find a property of the event, whatever the event is, is always ask yourself, what are we looking for over the total? This will always be what are we looking for over total, okay? And again, each thing in this in the sample space have an equal likely chance to occur, equally likely um, can come out. Okay, so I think I have a, a small problem that 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 to help you a, a, a little bit in the same of this item here. Let's say a single dice is roll, right? We have a single dice and roll, and they ask you to list the sample space and then compute the fallen probability find the property of the dice land on number five, uh, on a five, find the property of the, the dice land on the number less than five, and find the property of the dice land on an odd number. So if you keep, if you keep hearing me say that the, the dice, the dice, right? The dice, the sample space is one dot, two dot, three dot, four dot, five dot, six dot. And each dot re represent, represent by a number, one, two, three, four, five, six. So do you see that the sample space is just that? And again, we have this in roster notation, right? We list the individual item out. That's, that's what we have in chapter two, right? But uh, looking at this thing here, the sample space, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, your element, your item is those item. So how do we find a probability of the 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 when you roll or when you throw this this dice what is the probability of this thing land on number five well how many item how many number five do we have do you agree that my event i have only one psi i have only one item contain number five out of 
six items because that is my total outcome. So the probability of this thing here is one out of six, one over six, okay? So that's all that you ask yourself is, based on this sample space, how many items contain the criteria that we're looking for? How many items that contain the item that we're looking for and over the total? So similarly, similarly, if you look at this thing here, they ask you, find the property of land on a number less than five. Oh, I think I did something wrong. Uh, what number is less than five? Do you agree that this number is less than five? This number is less than five. This number is less than five. This number is less than five. So how many items fit the criteria that is less than five? We can see that it's four, not five, sorry. Let me change this. Four out of six. And four out of six, ladies and gentlemen, four out of six is equal to, we can reduce this item to, we can reduce this item to become two out of three, right? We can divide this by two. Two going four is two and two going six is three. We can reduce that item to that. So again, to fix this thing here, this is what we have, not five out of six, but we have only four, right? We have only four items that fit the description that is less than five out of the total item of six. So again, to find something, to find the probability of anything, the first thing you need to ask yourself is what are we looking for? What is the criteria we're looking for? And the criteria we're looking for, we put it on the numerator over the total. And if you divide this thing here, two out of three or two divided by three, this thing will give you 0.6666667, right? Um, this thing I think is 0.16666666. But again, um, on Alex, they will ask you for decimal or if they ask you for decimal, they will tell you how many decimal they want it or they will ask you to put them in fraction. Similarly, looking at this item here, how many items fit the description that is an odd number? Do you agree that odd number is one, three, and five? So do you agree that there are four, three items that is an odd number out of six items? And again, why out of six? Because the total sample space I have is six items and the item I'm looking for is, is three. What am I looking for? I'm looking for the odd number, three, odd number out of the total six. In terms of this, three out of six, reduce it to one half, meaning 50-50, right? I have 50%, if I roll the dice, if I roll this dice, I have 50% of getting an odd number and 50% of getting an even number, okay? So again, in short, that's what probability is. In short, all you do is we try to ask yourself, what are we looking for over the total? Okay, so let's take a look. Well, first of all, question with how to find the probability or what's the definition of probability? Again, the other, the other idea was just an easy, you know, communication purpose, right? The experiment, the event, events is what you're looking for. And the sample space is what is the total possible item in your experiment. Mr. Tron. Yes. Um, with, with this being um, just probability, will we always have to use um, fractions to determine the answer or no? Yes. Okay. You always, whatever they ask you for probability will always be fraction, unless they give you the probability in decimal. Okay. And then but you would just have to convert it into a fraction. Yes. Oh, okay. So it's, it's always a portion of something. Um, um, unless they, they tell you, the, you know, like if you watch the, the weather and they say the probability of the hurricane hit us is 0.73, you know, right? Meaning again, they give us the 73% the, 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 the already. So you don't have to put in a fraction. But, but whatever the probability is, um, if they give you the raw data like this, or any raw data, it will always be a fraction, yes. Okay. So, 
So there are four facts or there are four property for probability. So one thing is, like I mentioned earlier, the good thing whenever you try to find a probability is your probability will never be a negative number. Whatever you're looking for, your answer, will, if they ask you find a probability, find a probability, find a probability, your answer will be never, never, ever be negative because the smallest probability that we get is zero. And if it's zero probability, then that item, as you will see later, will never, ever occur. Okay, so the probability will never be negative. And the second thing is the probability will never be bigger than one. The maximum percentage we have is 100%. Ladies and gentlemen, the maximum percent we have is 100% and convert that to probability meaning one. The maximum that you have is one. And if the probability is equal to one, <clears throat> if the probability is equal to one, meaning that item will guarantee to occur that item will always occur will always happen okay the other thing is like i mentioned if you have zero so this is what we have is basically in the sense of this this level of certainty right this level of of, of certain if it's zero meaning it's impossible for you to occur whatever your property equals to zero meaning it's impossible for you to to have it so like if i have a dice right if i have a dice and i say if i roll a dice what is the probability of the dice land on number seven you say wait a minute the dice the biggest number is six how can it land on number seven meaning it's impossible for it to land on number seven right and if it's equal to one meaning it will always occur and again, anything in between, which is in the middle, which is 50-50, right? Uh, the, if you flip the coin and assume that they don't land on edge, if you flip the coin, it's 50-50, right? Uh, if it's a fair coin, I, I should say. And again, anything be less than 50-50, it will be unlikely to occur. Anything more than 50 would be likely to occur, okay? But your answer will always be between zero and one. So it's either it will be in decimal, or in fraction, it will never be in, in, in whole number other than one. So to answer your previous question, um, they will either give you a fraction or a decimal. And like I say, if they ask you to find a probability and you give me like 270, that's, that's wrong. <laughs> 270 is not a probability. It might be a total of something. You need to divide that into something or something like that, but you will never have the probability of something is equal to 100, more than 100%, okay? Um, and the last item is the sum of all probability. If you add all the probability together, it will be equal to one. So again, this is just the property of probability uh, in, in the sense that this thing will always a curve based on our probability definition. You will never have a negative. You will never have bigger than one. You will always, your probability will always be between zero and one. And you will, if you add all of your probability together, it will be equal to one, okay? So that's the good thing, right? That's the good thing is your answer. If, if they ask you to find a probability of something, then your answer will only be decimal. Okay, um, <clears throat> the next set of definition is if we have a probability of effect, which is your E. Now they turn around and they say, what is the probability of not the event? What is the probability of that event does not occur? So the complement, if you remember the complement in, in, um, Chapter two, the complement is what is outside of the circle, right? You either inside a circle or outside of the circle. You either inside A or outside of A. In this case, you either be a, an event or you not the event. And if you not the event, which is we have a apostrophe E and the or carrot, <coughs> carrot E. And to find a property of not the event, all you do is you take one. Why one? Because reminder, one is the maximum probability we have. We take the maximum probability minus the probability of the event. 
and that's the complement of the event. So for instance, let's say that if you watch the weather and the weather guy say the probability of rain for tomorrow, the probability of rain for tomorrow is 45%. Well, what is the probability of not going to rain, right? If we know that 45% or 0.45, if we know that the probability of rain is 0.45, do you see that if the probability of rain is 0.45, all I need to do is take one minus 0.45, and that will give me 0.55, meaning the probability of not rain, right? The probability of not rain tomorrow is 0.55. So that's what the complement tell you to do is if we know the probability of the event, if we know the probability of the event, whatever the event is, if we know that probability, all we need to do is take the maximum one minus that probability to give me the leftover or the complement of it, not it, okay? So again, 50-50 is easy, all uh, right? But whatever, if the probability of something is 0.21, then again, not that item will be 0.79, okay? So that's the complement of the event. And now, the, the terminology is a little bit different, um, but I want to sh tell you guys that the empirical versus the theoretical is the same probability. Well, not the same probability, but it's the same way to find it. Uh, the only thing different Related to the article is um, the theoretical is fixed. Meaning, if I tell you that we have a standard dice, you say, okay, standard dice, they are six sided, it's fixed. If I say that we have a standard 52 card, then you say, okay, that's the, the dex of card is 52, it's fixed. If I say that the corn, you would say, okay, the corn have two face, one tail, one head is fixed, meaning the article, most of the item will be some fixed item. Empirical, the only thing different between empirical is now you have to go and, and, and gather your data, gather your information, gather your, your, your item. Meaning for instance, if you want to know how many people vote in the next election, how many people are going to vote for, for Trump or how many people are going to vote for um, Biden, what can you do? Well, the only thing you can do is you can survey, right? You can only send out a letter and ask them to send back to you, or you can stand in front of Walmart or stand in front of Winn-Dixie or stay in front of, of whatever and ask them, do you A, vote for Trump or B, vote for, for Biden in the next coming election, which is the empirical is basically you have to go out and gather some information. But to find a probability, to find a probability is the same thing, ladies and gentlemen, to find a probability is what are we looking for? What is the event that we're looking for? Over the total item, the total people, right? So if you survey 500 people and 250 of them say they're going to vote for Trump, well, again, what is the probability they vote for Trump? Well, 250 over 500, you can see that 50-50. Right, and that's what we have in the sense of, of this empirical, it's just the terminology, it's just that tell you that your data, you have to gather your data rather than it's a fixed data, rather than it's a standard fixed item, okay? But to find a probability is always what we're looking for, in this case, the frequency over the total frequency or the total people, okay? All of this terminology, um, let's take a look at this item here. So, and again, I, I guess this is where I got the 500 people come in. But let's say if they give you this item, and this thing here is a, a, a empirical because they have, you know, this data will, the 500 people you ask might change. It's not always the same. And, and that's the reason why, or that's what empirical mean is, you know, this 500 people, and if you add another 500 people, the, the result will not be the same all the time, right? The reason why we say the article is because the, the corn is only a head or a tail. The dice is only one dot, two dot, three dot, four dot, five dot, six dot. It will never change. It's just that, 
right? Unless you, you scratch out one of the dot, but assumably it's just those dot. Or the, the Dexter core is just A, two, three, four, five, and, and so on, meaning it's always the same all the time. Empirical meaning this 500 people, and if you add another 500 people, if you ask another 500 people, the result will not have the same result as in this 500 people. So it's changing depending on where you ask or who you ask. And, and that's why it's empirical, okay? And, and that's the difference. But let's take a look at this thing here. And, and this is what they ask you is, in a random sample of 500 people, so we know that we ask 500 people, 210 of them have type O blood, 223 have type A, 51 have type B, and 16 have AB. First, set up your frequency distribution table, then use that answer to use that to answer the following question. So what does or what is the frequency distribution table? Well, the frequency distribution table is just basically you tally up and you basically create your chart. And we know that there are blood type. There are type O, type A, type B, type AB. And then the frequency is basically tell you, well, what is the number of people have type O? What is the number of people have type A and B and so on? So as you can see, if you add this number together, if you add the 210, the 223, the 51, and the 16, if you add them together, it has to be equal to the 500, right? So in the sense, in the sense, it's just basically we distributive the number corresponding to the, the category that they give us. In this case, this is my category. So I want to see where my number come from. Basically, this is your frequency distribution in terms that you, you distribute the people into this, each category based on their survey question. And looking at this thing here, this is your empirical because like I mentioned, if you add this, if you ask another 500 people, the result might not be distributed like this. It might be different, right? We might have more B plus type than A or something like that. But let's base on this item and they ask you, if we were to select one person, find the probability that the person have a type O blood. So again, find a probability, just the same as before, find a probability is what we're looking for over the total. What are we looking for? We're looking for type O. How many type O do we have? The probability of type O or O type. The top probability of type O is, do you agree that I have 210 people out of, what is the total people in my survey? In this sample, the total people in this survey or the total people is 500. So that is what we have. And if you hear me say, what we're looking for over the total is that's the case. What fit the description over the total? So again, most of the time they will ask you, like I mentioned, they will ask you for, for decimal and they will tell you how many small place they want it to be. And in this case, the decimal is will be 0 0.42. And to be safe, you can just give me a decimal. Um, I can go back if, if they mark it wrong. Uh, I can go back, but as you can see, it's not bigger than it's not bigger than one. Okay, and if you remember, your answer is have to be between zero and one. So in this case, we have 0.42. If you convert to decimal, if you convert to decimal, then yes, it's going to be 42 percent. Okay, but again, probability will always be in in decimal in the time of this. So if we select one random person. Find a probability of that person have type AB. AB together, not A or B, okay? Type AB blood. Again, how many people have type AB, which is in this case is 16 out of the total. Again, what am I looking for? I'm looking for the AB type, not the A type or the B type. It's an A, B together. And again, the A, B, I have 16, divide by that to give me 0 0.032. And the next question, what is, find the probability that the person do not have type A blood? So type A, do not have type A. Looking at this thing here, there are two ways you can do this. And do you agree that type A, we have 222 over 500. And 222 over 500 will give me point, 
four four six, right? But if you remember, they're not asking you for type A. They ask you for not, does not have type A. And how do we find the item that does not have type A? Well, do you agree that if we have type A, all we need to do is we take one, which is the maximum, minus 0.446. And if we do this thing here, we will get point um five five four right which is not type a does not have type a which is we if we know type a all we need to do is take one minus the type a to give us the the other item right so or if not what else can we do? Do you agree that this is what we can do is do, if you want to, oh my gosh. You guys still with me? Yes. 